In this short video, I want to look at something you'll see scattered across newspapers most days of the week, appears on research reports regularly, and that is the FTSE 100 index. What is it? What's its main uses? And are there any things to watch out for? So, two statements. One, you might see in a newspaper, 30 billion wiped off shares, nice and scary sounding. The other, you might find on a slightly more detailed pragmatic report. The FTSE 100 fell by 2% today to close at 6,100 points. Now, those statements can be compared like for like. 2% to 6,100 points would be about 30 billion, wiped off the total value of shares. My point is, statement number one will grab the headlines, statement number two is much more useful. Because statement number one, 30 billion, sounds like a lot, but in the context of what value in total are we talking about? Maybe it's not so much. Secondly, what sort of shares are we talking about here? Is it all shares, UK shares, European shares? Get the idea. Whereas the FTSE 100, as we'll see in a moment, tells you which country and which stocks fell by 2%, nice and precise, to close at 6,100 points, which means something to people who follow indices. So, with no more ado, why do we have these indices? We have them, first of all, to get a quick snapshot of equity market activity, an accurate quick snapshot of which shares are moving, by how much, and so on. But there are other uses too. They're a useful performance benchmark for investors. All right, if you are running a portfolio that's got blue chip securities in it, you want to know how you're doing. One way of testing that is to compare your performance to an index made up of, say, the top 100 companies in the UK market, the FTSE 100. Tracker funds can be based around these indices. So a passive fund that follows the FTSE 100, for example, needs the index as its base. And something I won't cover much here, just be aware that lots of derivative contracts bets essentially hedges against movements in share prices are built around these big indices like the FTSE 100. And the FTSE 100 for UK investors, certainly even a global investor, is one of the best known. Right, what's it built on? Just some basic principles here. First of all, what's it short for? Well, I suppose not surprisingly, Financial Times, Stock Exchange tells you that there were two organisations involved in putting it together in the early 1980s, the Financial Times newspaper group and the London Stock Exchange. Again, the whole thing's now coordinated by the FTSE Group, a subsidiary of the London Stock Exchange. So there we go. What is it and why was it put together? It represents the market capitalisation of the UK's top 100 companies. So what they did was to say, right, we don't want people saying 30 billion wiped off shares, 10 billion added to shares. It's just too vague, too meaningless. All right, what we want to do is take the value, the market capitalisation, that's the number of shares times share price, all right, if you imagine, we're going to rank all companies in the UK market that are listed and then chop off the top 100, and that will be a useful benchmark. Why? Because that will represent a significant proportion of the value of the entire listed universe of stocks. So what you do, imagine that value is 100 billion in sterling. All right, what you do is say, we will call that 1,000 points. How's that useful? Well, it just means that in the future, if the following day you stack up all the companies in a long list, chop off the top 100, or look at the value, the market capitalization, you find it's moved, because share prices have moved up, for example, so those companies have grown in size, then you know if 100 billion a day later is 110 billion, someone's got to do the laborious exercise of recalculating all those market capitalizations, finding the top 100, well, that's all done for you. You would just say, well, 110 billion, all right, converted into points is 1,100 points, or a 10% increase in the index. Numbers are pretty simple, so I'm just sketching the key facts there. All right, and so that's how the index was designed to be used, to give you a very quick way of getting market changes in share prices, sizes of top companies, into one easy-to-use number, okay? Now, London Stock Exchange runs a number of indices, as do other stock exchanges around the world. So just to give you a flavour of some of the ones you'll see most commonly quoted, the FTSE 100 is not surprisingly the sort of top 100 companies. If you were to list all the companies listed in London, bear in mind only about 600 odd companies make the official list at the London Stock Exchange, and there are a few more on the alternative investment market, which I'm ignoring here. Of those companies, a significant proportion all right, are represented by the FTSE 100 in value terms. The FTSE mid-cap is the next 250 biggest. 
So that's kind of in there. Add those together and you get what's called the FTSE, not surprisingly, 350. Okay, now you're up to an even bigger proportion of the total value of shares listed in London. And then add in the small ones, FTSE small cap stocks, all right, that's about another 300 odd stocks, and you've got the FTSE all share, excluding alternative investment market. Now, which index you use depends, frankly, on what you're trying to benchmark. If you're investing in small caps, illiquid, riskier stocks, you'll use the small cap index as your benchmark. If you're looking at mid caps, maybe the mid 250. If you're invested solely in big, highly uh, capitalized firms, then the FTSE 100s going to tend to be your benchmark. So it all depends. The index you pick depends on what you're invested in. Now, ins and outs, just a couple of admin points here. Won't hammer this too much. Memberships reviewed quarterly, right? So FTSE group, look at who's in and who's out. Promotion is considered if a FTSE 250 firm ranks 90th or higher. And demotion if a FTSE 100 firm ranks 111th or lower. Point is what they're trying to do is to make sure that stocks don't just bounce in and bounce out quarter to quarter. All right, Those rules maintain a bit of consistency, but do result uh, sometimes in a slightly bizarre anomaly that the FTSE 100 may be 101 stocks, could in theory be 99. All right, But that's just a quirk of the way the quarterly membership changes are decided. All right, The idea is to main, maintain some sort of consistency, but you will see membership of that club changing over time. All right, if stocks lose value, they will drop out of the top club, and as stocks get promoted, they rise into that club, and so on. So the constituents of the FTSE 100 look rather different today than they did, say, 10 or 20 years ago. Now, a glance at the chart. All right, what sort of performance do you get from an index of the top 100 companies in the UK? Well, going back to more or less inception over here, all right, mid-1980s, and running it up uh, to the end of last year, just to give you a snapshot, there goes the line, the FTSE 100 graph line. You'll notice a couple of things about it. It generally goes up, but in doing so, it suffers some fairly big dips along the way. And this is to make the point that even if you buy the biggest stocks in the UK market, don't assume that nothing can go wrong. All right, the index topped out at around 6,950 at the end of the dot-com boom, December 1999, but, hooray, you might be saying, but it's also gone down recently to 3,530. Now, remember, that's from a start of 1,000. So, you know, up here, the index, ignoring inflation, have gone up almost seven times, all right? But even here, they've gone up by three and a half times. And today, all right, today, you're looking at an index not shy, not too far shy of the kind of um, high sixes to 7,000 mark. So, over time, a nice performance, but with some quite big dips along the way. And of course, what you don't want to do as an investor is ever you know, start selling here, panic selling as the market starts dropping, panic selling here, when over the long term, generally speaking, the biggest companies in the UK market do power on. A few quirks, right? a few things to watch out for. This does focus on market capitalization. That means it tends to pick the biggest companies in the market for club membership. So. If you are simply tracking the FTSE 100, you are tending to weight your money towards the biggest stocks in the market. That's something to watch out for. You don't want to go down that route. An evenly weighted portfolio will sort of avoid that pitfall. It's dominated by relatively few sectors. People think, oh, 100 companies, wow, that's nice and broad. Not really. Okay, the FTSE 100 can, can, uh, is typically dominated over the last 10 years by just three or four sectors. So you're not as diversified as you might think. Many members have big overseas income streams, all right? So you are getting exposure, whether you like it or not, to overseas earnings streams with some of the currency conversion issues that come with that. And it's a capital-only index, all right? It ignores the fact that a lot of these big companies pay dividend income, 3 to 4%, depending on when you look at it. And that's pretty important. And the reason, and I'll finish with, it, with this point, is this. If you were to redraw the line, so go back to the chart, take it back to the start point, finish at the same end point and look at the line on a total return basis this time, that's capital and dividends added together, you get a similar looking chart. It's still going up overall. It still dips in places. You might notice it dips less sharply. Reinvesting dividend income, not spending it, reduces the overall volatility of your returns. That's the first point to note. 
And if you're thinking, well, other than that, it's the same line. No, because look where it started from. Not 1,000 points, 356. And at the start of the year, just for, to give an illustrative snapshot here, it was up at 4885. So now you're not looking at you know, a, a best case sort of sevenfold multiplier between the inception of the FTSE and the end of the dot com boom. That's a change of more like 14 times where you've got that reinvested income included. So there it is FTSE 100, very popular, widely quoted, plenty of people follow it. But just be aware it does suffer one or two drawbacks, and there are plenty of other ways to measure stock market performance in the UK.